Over the past few days, astronomers analyzing new data from the James Webb Space Telescope have identified what may be the earliest and most distant supermassive black hole ever observed. It appears to sit inside a compact young galaxy called GHZ2, seen as it existed only about 350 million years after the Big Bang. The key evidence is an unusually strong high ionization emission line that suggests a powerful, energetic source at the galaxy's center, potentially an actively feeding black hole. In this video, we will break down the discovery, why it matters, and what comes next. Let's get started. The young galaxy GHZ2 first appeared in JWST's deep field surveys in 2022 as one of several faint high redshift candidates. At the time, astronomers could identify it as an early galaxy, but they lacked the spectral detail needed to understand its internal processes. That changed with targeted follow-up using JWST's near-infrared spectrograph and mid-infrared instrument both designed to study galaxies whose ultraviolet and visible light has been stretched into the infrared by cosmic expansion. These new observations revealed a set of emission lines that stood out immediately. Among them was a prominent C4 line, produced when carbon atoms are stripped of multiple electrons. Such ionization requires a radiation field far more intense than that produced by normal stellar populations, even in rapidly forming primordial galaxies. To interpret the data, researchers constructed several models to simulate different physical conditions inside GHZ2. They began by testing whether extreme star formation alone could explain the observed lines. Early galaxies are known to host massive, short-lived stars capable of producing energetic radiation. However, when the models were pushed to their limits, they still failed to reproduce the strength of the high ionization signal. Introducing an active galactic nucleus, powered by material falling into a central black hole, significantly improved the fit. AGN naturally emit high-energy photons capable of producing the observed ionization levels. When this component was included, the modeling aligned more closely with the full spectrum. This does not definitively prove GHZ2 hosts an AGN but it strongly indicates the presence of a power source more intense than stars alone. Even so, GHZ2 does not display all the classical signatures of an AGN. Some expected features are faint or absent, which is not surprising at extreme distances where limited signal and dust obscuration can mask key indicators. The challenge lies in interpreting a system where the available data is sufficient to rule out some explanations, but not enough to confirm others conclusively. What makes the young galaxy GHZ2 especially notable is not only the potential black hole, but its timing. Seeing such an object less than 400 million years after the Big Bang places it at the threshold of cosmic dawn, during a period when galaxies were just beginning to assemble. Detecting an energetic central source at this early moment raises immediate questions about how quickly massive structures emerged. Taken together, the observations suggest that the young galaxy's GHZ2 is powered by a combination of processes typical of early galaxies, but with an additional component that requires a more energetic explanation. While the existence of a supermassive black hole within such a young system is not impossible, it pushes current models toward their limits, which is why GHZ2 has quickly become an object of significant interest. If the young galaxy GHZ2 does host a supermassive black hole, the discovery has major implications for how black holes formed in the early universe. The question is not simply whether such objects existed early, but how they could grow so quickly under the physical conditions present shortly after the Big Bang. Two main formation scenarios frame this discussion, light seeds and heavy seeds. Light seed black holes originate from the remnants of massive stars. The first generation of stars formed after the universe cooled enough for gas to collapse. 
These seeds begin small and can reach large masses only if they accrete steadily at near optimal rates. This requires a stable supply of gas and a favorable environment, which may or may not have been available in the turbulent early cosmos. Heavy seed black holes, by contrast, begin large. They may form when dense primordial gas clouds collapse directly under their own gravity, bypassing the stellar stage. These seeds could start thousands of times more massive than light seeds. Because they begin closer to the supermassive range, their growth to millions of solar masses within a few hundred million years becomes far more plausible. The possible black hole of GHZ2 falls into a mass range that is difficult to achieve quickly from light seeds, unless accretion is unusually efficient. Heavy seeds, on the other hand, would have a shorter path to reaching the observed mass. This is one reason GHZ2 is attracting attention. It sits in a regime where distinguishing between these two formation pathways becomes possible. Understanding which scenario dominated in the early universe is important because black holes influence their surroundings from the moment they form. Their radiation can heat nearby gas, regulate star formation, and shape the structure of early galaxies. If heavy seeds were common, black holes may have played a major role in the early evolution of cosmic environments. If light seeds grew faster than expected, it would indicate that early galaxy conditions were more conducive to rapid accretion than current models allow. The young galaxy GHZ2 also provides insight into the relationship between early galaxies and their central black holes. In the present universe, there is a strong correlation between the mass of a galaxy and the mass of its central black hole. However, deep JWST observations including GHZ2, suggests that at very early times, black holes may not have followed this relationship. Some may have grown more quickly than their host galaxies, building mass before the surrounding stars had time to assemble. This early imbalance could help explain several puzzling features seen in other high redshift galaxies. Some display unusually compact, bright cores that could indicate the presence of young black holes contributing significant energy. Galaxy G HZ2 fits into this broader pattern, adding evidence that galaxy and black hole coevolution may have been more varied and less synchronized during the universe's first few hundred million years. Because the young galaxy G HZ2 lies so close to the start of cosmic history, it also touches on questions about the epoch of ryanization, the period when the first luminous objects ionized the hydrogen filling the early universe. Black holes may have contributed significantly to this process. Understanding their abundance and energy output during this era helps refine models of how the universe transitioned from darkness to the complex structure we see today. Overall, the young galaxy GHZ2's significance lies not only in what it may contain, but in what its properties imply about the earliest stages of cosmic evolution. It situates itself precisely at the point where theory has the greatest uncertainty, providing data that can refine or challenge long-standing assumptions. If the young galaxy GHZ2 truly hosts an early supermassive black hole, this discovery could push astronomers to reconsider the timeline of black hole growth. Instead of forming slowly over hundreds of millions of years, black holes may have achieved large masses far earlier and under conditions that current models do not fully capture. This would influence everything from early galaxy evolution to the distribution of matter during the universe's first phases. To move from a strong candidate to a confirmed detection, researchers need more detailed observations. JWST can obtain higher resolution spectra that reveal finer details in the emission lines, allowing clearer distinction between star-driven and AGN-driven ionization. Specific signatures from elements such as nitrogen, oxygen, and silicon could provide strong confirmation of the radiation's origin. Subtle broadening in some lines would also offer compelling evidence for a central black hole. 
Observations from the Atacama Large Millimeter slash Submillimeter Array can complement JWS Geekbeist T data by mapping the cold gas and dust inside GHZ2. Understanding the distribution of this material will show whether the galaxy contains enough fuel to support rapid black hole growth. ALMA's ability to penetrate dust offers a clearer view of star-forming regions and the galaxy's internal structure. Beyond the young galaxy GHEZ2 itself, researchers will analyze JWST's catalog of early galaxies to identify others with similar spectral traits. If multiple examples are found, it would suggest that early supermassive black holes were not rare outliers, but an integral part of early cosmic structure. This would reshape assumptions about initial conditions in the early universe and influence future theoretical work. Simulations will also need to evolve. Many current models assume slow black hole growth or require specific conditions to produce heavy seeds. GHZ2 provides a concrete data point that can guide adjustments to these assumptions. Increasing the range of initial seed masses or modifying accretion prescriptions may be necessary to match observations more accurately. As more data arrives, GHZ2 will help define the landscape of early black hole formation. Whether it represents an exceptional case or a common type of early galaxy, it offers crucial insights into how the first massive structures built themselves from nearly nothing. The young galaxy GHZ2 offers one of the strongest early hints that massive black holes emerged far sooner than expected. If confirmed, it reshapes timelines for how galaxies and black holes formed in the first few hundred million years. It's a small object with big implications, and follow-up observations will determine just how far this discovery goes. <laughs>